Well, who would have thunk it, eh? Who would have expected this? Police ban Extinction Rebellion protests from whole of London. Citywide Met Police operation begins to clear Trafalgar Square and other protest sites. What a surprise. Police have banned XR protests from continuing anywhere in London, as they moved in almost without warning to clear... Uh. Police have banned XR protests from continuing anywhere in London, as they moved in almost without warning to clear protesters who remain at the movement's camp in Trafalgar Square. The Metropolitan Police issued a revision of Section 14 order on Monday night that said any assembly linked to XR autumn uprising must now cease their protests within London, MPS and City of London police areas by 9pm. So there you go. They can't actually demonstrate in London anymore, probably due to the fact that they are causing such disruption. In fact, if we look specifically at Section 14, it says if the senior police officer having regard to the time or place at which and the circumstances in which any public assembly is being held or is intended to be held reasonably believes that it may result in serious public disorder, which it will, serious damage to property, which is potential, or serious disruption to the life of the community, which it definitely will do, or B, the purpose of the persons organising it is the intimidation of others with a view to compel them not to do an act they have a right to do, or to do an act they have a right not to do, which also is potentially true because they are forcing them not to go about their day in the city. He may give directions imposing on persons organising or taking part in the assembly such conditions as to the place at which the assembly may be or continue to be held, its maximum duration or the maximum number of persons who may co constitute it, as appear to him necessary to prevent such disorder, damage, disruption or intimidation, i.e. they are well within their rights to stop re Extinction Rebellion. English law, eh? It's a real mouthful. So after this Section 14 was issued, Almost immediately, officers moved into Trafalgar Square and demanded that protesters remove their tents. Most XR activists staying in the site had already decamped to Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens, south of the river, and only a few dozen tents, along with gazebos and other infrastructure, remained on the square. More than 14,000 people had been arrested during the eight days of Extinction Rebellion action, with the threat that anyone defying police orders would be detained. This is what the disgraced former organic farmer movement is doing. It's just clogging up the court system that has to put people who are committing knife crime in jail. And for what? Like, again, every example of someone talking about this we've gone through can't back up their statements. Don't worry, I'll have one for you later in the video. But, like, seriously, go back through all my videos on this. None of them know what they're talking about. Howard Rees, a spokesperson for the former organic farmer movement, who was at the scene, told The Guardian that police started clearing Trafalgar Square before even issuing the revised order to protesters. They gave us the notification, we have started clearing the square, Rees said. It's all peaceful, people for the most part are being given the opportunity to move their possessions, but obviously there are a lot of people who have had stuff here who are not actually on site. Hence the marquees are full of people's gear and other people are trying to get it to safety. The police are for the most part watching over that operation. On Twitter, the London branch of XR wrote, Police are clearing peaceful protest in Trafalgar and Vauxhall. They are backtracking on promises made and MEPs say... They are backtracking on promises made and MEPs say in contravention of the UK law in the National Square. This is an emergency and an outrage. The police must respect the law. This is a democracy. Well, unfortunately for you, Section 14 is a justifiable law because you are absolutely causing disruption in the largest city in the UK. And I don't care how peaceful you are being, if you are breaking justifiable laws, you are breaking justifiable laws and should be punished for it. I have read your handbook, you caught arrest. You will try to break non-violent laws. You should absolutely be barred from protesting if that is what you intend to do and what you have been doing. Of course, when your virtue is on the scale of a planet, you can justify anything, can't you? According to Kevin Bowl, the coordinator for the Network for Police Monitoring, said the order effectively amounted to a ban on Extinction Rebellion without going through the due process that would usually be required. A ban has been made by the Home Secretary, he said. Our reading of it is that Section 14 powers are supposed to be used with caution because people still have a right to protest and potentially this is unlawful and there is no other way to put it. Take a look at what Section 14 says. It's about restricting a number of people for a particular duration of time. 
My feeling is that it has been open to some form of potential legal challenge. Well, if this hasn't gone through due process, then fair enough, it should go back and be put through due process. However, it can limit the time an assembly can go on, and since it's gone on for a week and caused massive disruptions, yes, I think it is totally justified to use this section to call off the assembly of Extinction Rebellion. And similar things are said by the Deputy Assistant Commissioner Lawrence Taylor, who said these conditions have been imposed due to the continued breaches of the Section 14 condition previously implemented an ongoing serious disruption to the community. We have made significant progress in managing Extinction Rebellion's activity at sites across central London over the past week. Officers have begun the process of clearing Trafalgar Square and getting things back to normal. But a few XR activists locked themselves in place to slow the police operations, Reese said. Specialist police teams were working to cut them free and arrest them. <laughs> so there you go. There were terms agreed on the Section 14 Act between Extinction Rebellion and the police. And it turns out that Extinction Rebellion have been abusing this agreement. So now they're going all Pikachu-faced about it, I have absolutely no sympathy for them. Especially since now it is revealed that Extinction Rebellion activists defy the London-wide protest ban. Actions continue after Met Police order end to protests across the capital. So they can't just stick to an agreement for some reason, but they think they're rebelling so of course they will. Climate protesters have promised to continue their mass civil disobedience campaign in London despite a citywide ban on their demonstrations announced late on Monday night. Well, of course they are. Hundreds of police officers move in almost without warning to clear protesters who remained in Trafalgar Square, blah, blah, blah. The crackdown, which was condemned by campaigners and politicians, came shortly after the Met issued a revised Section 14 order on Monday, stating that the autumn uprising must now cease. However, by 8pm on Tuesday, it was clear that the climate campaigners had no intention of backing down, as one of the organisation's founders, Gail Bradbrook, led a protest at the Department of Transport in London. Well, should we have a little video to see how that went? Yes, that was her with a hammer and chisel, hammering away at the Transport for London's glass entrance. So when they say peaceful, what they mean is non-violence to other people, but they will still cause property damage. Yes, I am still not sympathetic about this blanket ban on the autumn uprising. Standing on top of the entrance of the building before she was arrested, Bradbrook called on ministers to explain how their continued expansion of roads and airports fitted with a net zero emissions target. I do this for the beautiful pear tree at Cummington Woods. 250 years old. They have no rights. I do this in fierce love for the 108 ancient woodlands threatened by HS2. This climate crime of a project. It's also an economical crime, I'd say. I do this for the spirit of what Emmeline Pankhurst called the noble art of window smashing. Oh my god, you are... <sighs> They're actually comparing themselves to the suffragettes. Which, if you listen to Peter Hitchens, you'll know that it was the suffragists who did all the work to actually get the women's vote, not the suffragettes. And also, the suffragettes weren't exactly entirely peaceful. But despite the crackdown, XR activists said they were determined to carry on with their protests, with plans to close one of the bridges across the Thames later on Tuesday with no food, no future protest, and an XR grandparents group planning a protest outside Buckingham Palace. Ronan McNairn from XR said the authorities could not ignore the crisis. Those making the decisions around this need to realise that we are a peaceful organisation and there is not a security solution to this. The climate and ecological crisis is here and it cannot be addressed by tougher policing. Well, oddly enough, since your protest is openly about shutting down the capitalist system of London, and this system is what makes the economy grow and make money, and in many cases allow for innovations, and guess what? Innovations into renewable tech, into nuclear power, into everything that will answer your concerns. Yes, policing you from disruptions around this city will probably actually allow people to get to work and get on with their innovations to solve this climate crisis. But no, for some goddamn reason, you think it's only the government's job that can do that. I'm afraid you're wrong and this channel has gone through how Shell and other big oil companies are swiftly moving to renewables because it's where the money's gonna be. So I'm sorry, I have no sympathy for your autumn protest to be shut down. And from the looks of it, it is just the autumn protest. This isn't a blanket ban on Extinction Rebellion's protests altogether. It's just those related to the autumn protests. 
And if it was just a blanket ban on them for all time, I would obviously be against that, because that is heavy-handed. But since you openly state that you want to disrupt this city for two weeks, and one week was bad enough, yeah, no duh they're going to come and stop you and give you the ban hammer. And also Green MEP Ellie Chowns said, Last night I was arrested in Trafalgar Square while defending the right to peaceful public protest. That right is central to a functioning democracy. Yesterday, public protest was banned throughout our capital city. This is a completely unjustified and disproportionate measure. Well, that's a load of fake news. What was actually banned was the autumn uprising from Extinction Rebellion because it is openly about disrupting and infringing on other people's rights to go about their day and earn their living. Which, believe it or not, you have no right to do. And don't give me this stuff about defending rights because Rupert Reid spokesperson for Extinction Rebellion said, BBC Radio wanted to have me on today to debate a climate denier in the context of drought slash heatwave. I said no. I told them it was a disgrace that they are still giving climate deniers airtime and at a time like this. I won't be part of such charades any longer. Please retweet if you agree. So they don't agree to open debate, they don't agree to open protest. They only agree with anyone furthering their aim. It's very much a one rule for me, another for thee. And they think that they are above the law in this case. And of course I am for their right to protest and for their right to free expression. But when it's clear the agreement to the protest with the police has got out of hand and they abuse that agreement, yeah, they completely lose that right. I don't care. You had your chance to cause disruption, you overreached with your agreement, and now this is what you get. So then when Spiked Magazine come out with hands off the crusties, Extinction Rebellion must be allowed to protest peacefully, yeah, in principle I agree, but they get their details wrong in this. The police have banned Extinction Rebellion from protesting in London. No, they have banned them during the autumn uprising because they abused their agreement. Last night, the Metropolitan Police began clearing up the XR camp in Trafalgar Square and issued a stark warning to protesters. Any assembly linked to the Extinction Rebellion autumn uprising must now cease their protests within London. So you just contradict your first paragraph with the second. Lovely stuff. This is what I laugh at the Guardian for, Spike, so I don't want to see you do it too. Police are using draconium... Mm. Police are using powers under Section 14 of the Public Order Act, a draconian piece of legislation that effectively gives police carte blanche to arrest protesters. Britain's public order laws are a menace to free expression and to free assembly, severely curbing the right to protest. Unlike our right to speech, the right to protest is not absolute. Police should move people on if they are blocking roads and disrupting everyday life, and they should arrest people who cause damage. Even so, banning XR affiliates from the whole of London is a totally disproportionate response. Most of the XR protesters are harmless, if a little odd. Again, I would agree with this in principle. However, I don't see the law being abused here, but I can see that it has potential to be abused. Here we have Extinction Rebellion, openly saying that they are going to disrupt the whole of London with the with the intent to disrupt people's everyday lives for their end goals. And again, there appears, according to the police, to have been an agreement where they were allowed to assemble within certain places, within certain times, with a certain amount of people. And they both mutually agree to this. That, in my mind, is a fair contract. And then XR go ahead and breach that contract. So I think, as a group, they should be banned from protesting for autumn. I'm okay with them resuming protests at any other time with different plans. And of course, if people stir up trouble again, like they have this time, such as breaking windows and climbing on top of airports, yes, again, they should be arrested and face legal consequences. Spikes even go on to say that the great irony is that many Extinction Rebellion protesters want to be arrested. Getting arrested adds a veneer of radical respectability to XR's programme of eco-austerity. XR co-founder Roger Hallam often rather arrogantly compares his eco-cult to the civil rights movement. Let's not give them satisfaction. The police should back away from the crusties. And this was a point I was going to bring up, but since Spike did, I will go through it as well. Yes, this is pretty much what Extinction Rebellion want. They want to be arrested to appear like some sort of martyrs for their movement. And this may eventually get them the 3.5% of the population they need to implement the change they think they'll get. However, the law is the law, and as far as I can see, this is justified even if it has the power to be abused. Perhaps it could do with some amendment. However, I do not want these protesters disrupting the capital city and getting away with it all. If they break the justified laws, they break the justified laws. They absolutely should face consequences. I don't care if it's what they want. If they start getting away with this sort of thing, 
then we're going to have to excuse other protest groups from getting away with similar sorts of things, and I absolutely do not want that. And you don't have to tell me the preciousness of freedom of speech and freedom of protest. I myself have been part of a protest for freedom of speech. Anyway, let's move on to see what the protesters have to say about themselves. Take this clip from R. Nige having a chat with an Extinction Rebellion protester. Now, is it true that your protesters, those who are camping out on the streets of London, are actually being paid to do this? So many of those people who are camping out on the streets of London are there because they've taken two weeks off work to mm -hmm. come to London. You know, I actually take that word that most of these people are are actually in jobs. I know it's a meme that it's like, do these people not have jobs? No, I can see people taking two weeks off work for this. People took weeks off work when Donald Trump came over to protest him. Uh, people I know I mean. So I can't see that being out of the question. And to highlight the emergencies, well, that, the vast majority well of people receive no payment whatsoever. Ah, so some people are paid to do so that. Some people are paid living expenses because they are committed full-time to working for us. So you can get a full-time job at Extinction Rebellion. You can literally get paid to work for Extinction Rebellion and work out how to cause disruption and organise all this stuff. Can't we like technically say that's literally being paid to organise crime? We're not saying you have to do this for free. We're saying whatever, wherever you come from within society, whether you're privileged, whether you're working class, if you're committed to Extinction Rebellion, you can come and work for us and we will cover your costs so you can do it. Well, there you go. If you're poor, you get paid by Extinction Rebellion to camp out in the middle of nowhere. Do you understand the argument? I mean, if I, if I was a London taxi driver, right, I would say to you, there are people being paid to sit in the street to stop me earning a living. Do you yeah, I agree, Nige. Ask her why she has the right to stop people from earning a living, legitimately. Yes, of course. And the, uh, the whole philosophy of Extinction Rebellion is to disrupt. That's what we set out to do. There's no easy way of saying that. It, and every time I say that, I sit in studios and I say to somebody, I am setting out to disrupt your everyday life. I, I, I feel very, very uncomfortable about it. Well, then why are you doing it? Well, I know why. It's because of a planetary-wide virtue signal. But while you're there saying I'm saving the planet, you are causing people to be poorer just because you want to disrupt people's day-to-day -day lives. Because, again... As we keep saying, and you keep saying, the planet's dying, which it isn't. No. If we stand on the streets and hand out leaflets, nobody takes any notice of us. The politicians don't take any notice of us. And interestingly, Nigel, the only reason I'm on this programme today is because we've camped out on the streets of London for the last week. No, just... There you go. There you have it. They are causing disruption because it gets them attention. And we've gone through the past 30 years, nothing's happened argument. Yes, we have absolutely done more than enough for these type of people. They're just ignorant to it. No, to some extent that's true. But if you really want to move this on... Look, I took the view that our relationship with the European Union was heading in the wrong direction. I wanted to do something about it. I found, at the time, there were no more than a couple of dozen people in Westminster who were, who were even interested, frankly, in the issue. Um, and so I had a point of view that was very, very, very polar opposite to where political debate in Britain was, and so what did I do? Well, I went out and campaigned around the country, uh, helped form political parties, uh, gained elected representation, um, and managed to succeed. I don't think I've ever broken the law in doing what I'm doing. So isn't the real argument here that we are a peaceful, democratic society, and that what you've brought to London is, frankly, anarchy in the last week? This is true. Nigel managed to get the biggest upset in democratic history onto the ballot. And well, while we're not out of the European Union yet, due to much larger issues, point is, he set out to do one thing and he managed it over 26 years without ever breaking the law and going through the normal systems. And this is with the establishment constantly attacking and defaming him. So why can't they do it? So that's, that's a really good question. And you... And the idea that we can address the ecological emergency via our democratic system has been one that has been taken forward over the last 30 years. We've tried very, very hard, like through the Green Party, um, through motions, through campaigning, through marching. We've tried very, very hard to do that, to raise it up, the agenda. And to be honest, we haven't done it as well as you raise the issue of, of our relationship. Well, I don't know. You managed to get the Emergency Act and a 2050 carbon neutral target set 
for the government, so you've definitely done something there. Why isn't it enough? Problem is that you're making claims that are, frankly, hysterical. Your website says that there is the possibility of billions dying. That is just not credible, is it? So, I'm interestingly, I'm sat in an LBC studio here and I'm watching BBC News on, on the screens and I'm watching pictures of houses being washed away in Japan. Question, and as we went through the Andrew Neil one in my last video, I'm not going to bother anymore with this dodging of the question stuff because it's just pointless. I'm sorry, but this, this, this extreme weather story is utter nonsense. No, it's not. You, you know, even, even the, the UN's IPP, IPCC... Even they, who have been set up uh, to actually prove that global warming happens, I mean, even they say they have very low confidence in the level at which global warming could lead to high risks associated with extreme weather. True, even they're fairly alarmist to some extent, but, like, nowhere near the extent Action Rebellion are. So why the hell would we listen to them? If even the I IPCC say that, in fact, extreme weather uh, is not related at the moment to climate change. Why do you believe that it is? So we haven't had ch huge changes in weather and climate over the last 10,000 years. It's been an incredible, stable period. Um, <clears throat> and our weather is becoming more extreme. Uh, the Bahamas, they have just had the strongest hurricane to hit the Bahamas in the northern hemisphere ever. It's flattened the Bahamas. Every weather event, every extreme event that we have is preceded by the next most extreme weather event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, new record breakers are going to, you know, beat old record breakers. That our scientific measurements are telling us we are warming up and our weather is becoming more and more extreme. That's... Uh, climate change? Of course I agree with climate change. It's a constant thing. The climate is always changing. Yeah, this is really the thing. Norm really disagrees that there is some type of warming going on. Of course, we see that even by anecdotes. I think the main problem is, though, is exactly what Nigel's going to go into. But your, your obsession in Extinction Rebellion and the global warming movement is all with carbon dioxide, OK? A couple of points to make on that. You know, the first one is... What is it you actually want? The, I mean, bear in mind, of course, that in terms of CO2 emissions, this country is between 1% and 2% of the world, and we are very, very small in this game, indeed. What is it you actually want the government to do? We would effectively have to close down the whole of British industry, wouldn't we? We would have to totally refocus British industry. It would be a mobilisation like we did in 1939. It, it, whatever hang on, hang happens... On, on. It's, the, it's the opposite, isn't it? In 1939, we built factories to produce munitions for war. I, I mean, uh, presumably... Actually, we refocused our factories, Nigel, is what we did. We took the infrastructure that was in place and yeah. we refocused it towards the war effort. And also, what we also did was we rationed what was available... Um, and brought the country together. We unified the country and we mobilised to fight a common enemy. Unfortunately, the enemy that we're looking at at the moment, we can't see it. So, but it is, it is there, and that's why we're calling for zero carbon by 2025. So there we go, there it is. It's a lot easier to get the country into a state of state rationing, state industry making munitions for war, and, you know, sacrificing the young men to go to the front lines to fight the Nazis. It's a lot easier to get your country to do that and have national unity than, as you say, fight an invisible enemy, which you are assuring us is there, even though most people are listening to the IPCC. So the choices that we're looking at are really, really grim. Um, <clears throat> and that's why Extinction Rebellion is asking for a citizens' assembly. So the people come together to decide how <clears throat> and what the change that is required looks like, rather than politicians sitting in Westminster and saying to us, you have to do that, this, you need to do that. I'm sorry, but these are representatives voted in by the people. What you're essentially asking for is direct democracy all the time. Oh, we tried that in 2016. Look in the mess we're in. We bring together... How? The city well, you, we do it in various ways. We already do it for juries, for example, and in the past, juries decided life or death of people. We bring it together using... Um, Who? Use who brings them together? OK, there's a number of people who are, who are already running citizens' assemblies. There's external bodies. You ask a body of people to set up the citizens' assembly. You bring together 
people from across the United Kingdom, so it represents people in terms of their age, in terms of their uh, social status, in terms of their wealth. You get a cross-section of people, you explain to them, you educate, and then you ask their opinion of how we move forward. So, focus groups. That's basically what you want. You want focus groups for the government. It'd be interesting what the methodology behind this is, because so far it's just weasel words to explain your people's assembly. From what I could tell from your handbook, it was very much just going to be like that point of personal privilege democracy that we saw from the Socialists of America or whatever it was. And then what do you do? Do you put, do you put this to a referendum? Do you, I mean, is, I mean, you is, implement it through government. You have to keep the so, structures so of the a, state in place. An appointed citizens assembly would tell government what to do. They would lead and advise government and it then becomes very difficult for government to say we are not going to do this because it has been uh, requested by the people, by representatives mm, of I, the people. I have to say, I, I'm very and... sceptical about that. So am I. It's basically a focus group to like strong arm the government. It's like lobbying but much worse. Who is educating these people? God knows, you haven't even said that. But I assume it's going to be scientists that you like rather than the 6,000 working on the IPCC. I can't believe that Extinction Rebellion have brought me to defending the IPCC. I hate that panel. Well, I, Nigel, can very... I offer an invitation to you? What I would like to do is to offer an invitation to you to come and understand about Citizens' Assembly. I've, seen, I've seen them in and Brussels. How radical... <laughs> but why is it? But why is it? See, we had a caller this week. I was debating this in the week. I had a caller ring in from Broadstairs in Kent, and he was in charge of the local beach cleaning. He said, it's really interesting... I put big appeals out in my local newspapers and through the internet for volunteers to come along and help do beach cleaning. He said nobody under 50 ever, ever turns up. And I do wonder about this. If CO2 is what you're worried about, the one real antidote for that, as I understand it, are that trees absorb lots of carbon dioxide. Why don't you guys become part of a national campaign to reforest the United Kingdom. You know, we've really got only about a quarter of the woodland and forestry that we had just going back a few centuries. I see your campaign as being negative. Where are the positives? Once again, he raises a good point. Anyone want to take bets on whether she actually addresses the point? So once you get into providing solutions, you then start arguing about solutions. And when Extinction Rebellion started... From a disgraced former organic farmer... The idea and the severity of the climate of, of the emergencies that we face was not even on the agenda. Well, that's a lie, because I watched the documentary from The Guardian. In fact, I did my own video on it, where it shows him going around starting it up. And he was very much talking about the climate emergency, so don't give me that. And so Extinction Rebellion's main aim is to tell the truth, to request zero carbon by 2025, because that is what is needed to give us a chance of um, of avoiding catastrophic and, and runaway heating of our planet and to use democracy via the Citizens' Assembly, upgrade democracy to find the solution to it. So your answer to save the climate is to completely change the way we currently run the country. I'm sorry, but you've got to see why this is insane, especially when even the main body for this climate science, no matter my problems with it, don't even go as far as what you're saying. They're fine with 2050 targets. I'm fine with no target. But that's because the market's naturally going towards renewables anyway. But you must be able to see people's problem with this. Surely. If we ask people, if we say, <clears throat> we're facing an emergency and what I want you to do is go out and plant a few trees, mm. it doesn't really feel like what we're asking you to do is commensurate with the risk that we are saying you are facing. Would a global now, reforestation plan solve the problem? It would not solve the problem. That's because the problem is, spoiler alert, capitalism, colonialism and Western society, as it is incredibly repressive to minority communities. And that is paraphrased straight from your handbook. So don't give me this stuff about the climate, because this is not about the climate, as everyone knows. But um, using using our um, it would help. using plants, using trees, using sequestration through ag agriculture is absolutely one of the things that we need to do and that we need to get started well, on. And I would imagine that that would be something that a citizens' assembly would would. Yeah. Well, would... I have to. I have to... Uh, you can actually start solving that problem now. I was just watching Simon Reeve in the Americas today, and there's a whole section where a businessman from Silicon Valley who had billions of dollars was buying up loads of parts of Montana just to make it a wildlife reserve and to bring it back to the wild and to reforest it. 
because Montana was mainly a ranching region where the cows are basically need a load of flatland to eat grass from. So he's doing a massive push to get trees growing again, to get wildlife growing again. And what are you doing? Oh, we demand the government make all these changes for us. No, that's not how you go about change. And we need to stop thinking that we can only change things politically because it's causing all sorts of problems like this. Well, I have to, I have to uh, say, of all the things you've said, the Citizens' Assembly frightens me the most because I worry who'd be on it. But... Yep, that's my problem too, and that's where he ends it. So there you go. The amount of things that Extinction Rebellion think they need to do, stopping them from having assemblies and trying to disrupt London, probably not going to stop them. But they should absolutely face full extent of the law from the illegal activity that they have been doing. Criminal damage is still a thing. Obstructing main roads is absolutely still a crime. If you do this en masse, expect to get punished en masse. But that's about everything I had for you today. So, as usual, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, see you later.